Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, and welcome to Command Power, the show in which we discuss all things Magic the Gathering with a focus on Commander. And today we have a brand new deck tech for you, and just as a quick heads up, this is not a budget deck, although I do think it should be fairly easy to find substitutes for those expensive cards. But before that, just a quick reminder to please click like and subscribe if you enjoyed my videos. We're well on our way to a million subscribers and every single click counts. And today's Commander deck list is going to be centered around Agatha of the Vile Cauldron. For one red and one green, she's a legendary creature Creature Human Warlock 1 1 with activated abilities of creatures you control cost X less to activate, but X is Agatha of the Vile Cauldron's power. This effect can't reduce the mana in that cost to less than 1 mana. And 4 colorless, 1 red, 1 green, other creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1 and gain trample and haste until end of turn. So Agatha immediately stood out to me as a pretty sweet combo kind of commander. There's just a lot of different things you can do with that ability. Discounting activated abilities can be very powerful in the right situation. The thing we want the most with her is activated abilities that don't require a creature to tap because that means we can use them multiple times a turn, particularly if we can get them down to really cheap so they only cost one or two mana. The discount is dependent on Agatha's power, so obviously we're also going to be running a few things to make sure that she can get higher power than one. That means that a minor sub theme in the deck is also plus one plus one counters. There's a lot of cards that are going to care about that, seeing as it works very well with Agatha. This deck should be pretty strong, but it is actually very easy to shut it down by just removing Agatha which makes the deck a lot weaker. That's why the plus one plus one counter plan is a good backup because it's going to mean that our creatures can get bigger over time and maybe still do stuff even if our commander keeps eating removal. Anyway without further ado let's get started with the list. We're starting off with Armorcraft Judge. This one is a classic card in any counters deck. It's going to be pretty good here and should draw us a few cards. Beast Whisperer is another staple that's going to allow us to draw cards. Every deck needs card draw and this does it pretty well. Balls Invoker is a really spicy card that you've probably never seen played at a commander table or if you have seen it it hasn't been very frequently. This is going to be very good if we get Agatha up to enough power because we can just repeatedly dome all of our opponents for four which is very solid. Biophagus is incredibly good with our commander. Getting Agatha down with an extra power is obviously great. It's also just a generically good card that can get all of our creatures a little bit bigger. Burnished Heart works really well with Agatha. Even if she's only one power she's still going to provide a discount to the ability but as long as we get her up to two power this is only going to cost one mana which makes it much better than it normally is. Captivating Crew can be a great way to finish off the game with Agatha if we get her power to high enough by stealing all of our opponent's creatures. The Defiler of Vigor is going to work really well by pumping all of our board which is obviously great but it works really well with Agatha as well since we can play Agatha first and have her sit around on the board and then play the Defiler of Vigor later on and pump her anyway which is going to help enable all of our combos. Drillworks Mole is a really cute and innocuous card that works really well with Agatha. It's going to grow itself and grow Agatha and even the first time we activate it, it's only going to cost one mana, so it's a very solid card. Dusquatch Recruiter we're playing for the front side, which is basically the only side we can really guarantee. It's very good to help us draw some gas and when Agatha has enough power, it's just doing it for one green mana, which is very powerful. Elder of Laurels is a great way to finish the game when we have a white board and a big enough Agatha by pumping all of our creatures massively. Elvis Mystic is a really good mana ramp that comes down early on. Evolution Evolution Sage is a great way to proliferate all those plus one plus one counters that we're going to be getting. Fertilid fits both of the angles that this deck is going for very well, both the plus one plus one counters and the activated abilities angle. With Agatha out, this only costs one mana and we can proliferate the counters on it so that we can keep getting lands out of our deck. Note that in this deck in particular, getting a lot of lands is very important since all of our activated abilities are going to cost mana. Flame Wave Invoker is another card similar to Baal's Invoker. It's going to deal five damage but targeted rather than to each opponent. Forgotten Ancient is great in this deck. It's a card that has fallen out of favor a little bit in Commander these days, but it's going to grow a lot in this deck and those counters can be transferred on to Agatha during her upkeep to make her huge. Frontier Guide is a forgotten card from Zendikar that is very powerful and basically provides another effect similar to Fertilid. Goblin and Archimancer is going to reduce the cost of most cards in our deck, so it's amazing here. Gorilla Shaman is always a decent card, but in this deck it's going to be better than normal because we should be able to activate its ability for very cheap thanks to Agatha. Guardian Augmenter is one of the ways to protect our commander. We can flash it in and give her plus two plus two and hexproof. Those two things are both things that we can use. Usually the plus two plus two is not necessary 
necessarily that useful, but with Agatha it plays right into our game plan. Alana and Elena partners works really well with Agatha by putting counters on her and doing so immediately. It can also just put counters on other creatures, and since we're going to be growing our creatures naturally, this should be very powerful in the deck. Hound Tamer has an activated ability that puts counters on stuff. That fits both angles of what we're doing very well. It is very expensive initially, but with Agatha out, that shouldn't be a problem. Leafkin Avenger can ramp us a lot if we have a bunch of creatures with four power that we should have in this deck. And then also it's just going to help finish the game very quickly once we pump it with our counters or in other ways by dealing a ton of damage to our opponents, particularly if we have Agatha out. Magus of the Candelabra is a really solid card in this deck by providing us some very good mana advantage. With Agatha out, it's effectively tapping for one mana, but if you have Agatha pumped to any reasonable degree, this can provide eight or nine mana each turn which of course is very good with all of our activated abilities. Nylea Keen Eyed is going to give a nice cost reduction to all of our creatures, but then it also has a good activated ability that can draw us more and more gas. Ronas the Indomitable also has a great activated ability that works super well with Agatha. The first time we activate it, it's going to cost two mana, but then the second time it's just going to cost one, and after a couple of activations, Agatha is going to be huge. Rishkar Pima Renegade works very well with all of our counter synergy, while also being a good way to pump Agatha. Shaman of Forgotten Ways is a really sweet card in this deck. It can add two mana to cast creatures, which is already very good, but also it has an activated ability that should be fairly easy to use in this deck with all of the discount we're getting from Agatha, and we can just steal some games with this out of nowhere. Soul of Nufaraksha is a great way to protect our board, particularly to protect our commander, which will probably be the target of removal more often than not. Soul Bright Flamekin is a card that I used to love in my Ashling decks, and it's still really good here. If you activate the ability three times per turn you're going to be adding eight mana but with Agatha out it's only going to cost you three mana to activate which means that this is netting you five mana every turn. Also the fact that it gives trample can be quite relevant in certain situations. Steel Hellkite is a really powerful card that can pump itself with an activated ability but the better ability is one where it can actually destroy a bunch of non-land permanents from our opponents if it's dealt combat damage to that opponent. Svela Ice Shaper is going to be popping out mana lids for very cheap and as we've mentioned this is a very mana hungry deck so this is great to have. Later on when Agatha is big enough we can just sink a ton of mana into the second ability to just get a bunch of really good card advantage. Thundering Mightmare is a card that I really like and it works really well in this deck when it's paired with Agatha because then it's just going to grow itself and Agatha whenever any of our opponents plays a spell and they're going to have to do that. Tosky Bear of Secrets can draw us a lot of cards and we do need a bit more card draw in the deck. Valakut Invoker is another of our finishes that is just going to deal directly direct damage to any target. We can also use it as removal in a desperation situation. Vorinclex is going to be very easy to flip when Agatha is big enough and as we all know the other side of Vorinclex just provides massive amounts of value. Searching up for two lands on ETB is also incredibly good in this deck. Wildheart Invoker is another way that we can try to finish the game by giving a creature plus five plus five and trample. When you activate this ability a few times in a turn thanks to Agatha it can finish the game very very quickly. It's also great to get the ball rolling by targeting Agatha with the ability in the first place. For sorceries, we're running Expand the Sphere. This is a great way to search up some more lands, but it can also be used as proliferate in a pinch, and since we have so many counters, that's a good option to have. Rishkar's Expertise is going to draw us a bunch of cards, hopefully, since we're probably going to have a pretty high-powered creature, and then we get to play something for free as well. Unnatural Restoration is Recursion. That is also going to allow us to proliferate. And Witcher's Mark is a very good effect in this deck. Obviously, drawing two to by discarding one is a pretty common ability these days, but getting a plus one plus one wicked roll attached to something as well is very strong, particularly since our commander wants to be buffed. For instance, we have Inspiring Call that should help to protect our board a little bit whilst drawing us some cards. Invigorate is really good if we want to try to go off and win a game with a big turn. We can just play it for free basically and give Agatha plus four plus four, and it doesn't really matter if someone's gaining three life, because hopefully we're going to deal so much damage with activated abilities that it doesn't matter. Snakeskin Veil is also a great protection effect in this deck because it can protect Hagatha whilst also growing her, which is all that we could ask for in a spell like this. Tivistan does something similar, but it's really
really only until end of turn, so again, we really want to use it if we're going to try to go off and win the game on the spot. And Vassward Fortification doubles up as a land, but it can also just put a counter on Agatha in a pinch. For artifacts, we have Agatha's Soul Cauldron. It can allow for some really interesting plays by getting activated abilities from stuff we exile from a graveyard. It also has synergy with our plus one plus one counters and is graveyard hate, so it just works very well in the deck. Blackblade Reforged is a good way to finish off the game with all the trample we have, but it's also very good when you staple it onto Agatha because it's going to immediately give her a ton of power. Commander's Plate is similarly very good by giving Agatha protection and also making her a 4-4. Lightning Greaves is just good protection from Agatha as are Swiftfoot Boots. Ozolith the Shattered Spire is a really powerful effect in this deck because it's going to give us an extra plus one plus one counter every time we put a plus one plus one counter on something but crucially it can also get the ball rolling by putting two counters on Agatha immediately. And the Great Henge achieves almost everything we want in this deck. It's going to draw us a ton of cards. It's going to add mana which we need and it's going to work with our plus one plus one counter synergy. For enchantments, we have Guardian Project, which is another way to draw us cards. Rhythm of the Wild allows us to put a plus one plus one counter on them as they come in, which is great with Agatha. And Tribute to the World Tree is going to immediately grow Agatha to a 3-3, whilst also drawing us a bunch of cards in the deck. For lands, we've got Forge of Heroes, which is a great way to grow Agatha if we've just played her that turn. Kessig Wolf Run is a good one to sink some mana into. It can also be a great way to finish the game if our opponents are unaware. Lanawar Reborn sticks around with a counter on it until we play our commander, at which point it immediately grafts it onto her. And Orin Reef the Vastwood is again another way to grow our commander and also grow most of our green creatures the turn they come into play. So there you have it. That has been our Agatha of the Vile Cauldron deck list. I think there's a lot of interesting synergies in this deck. It's a very technical deck, I think, but if you enjoy going through the motions and trying to figure out how to combo off or how to win, then this is going to be an incredibly fun deck for you. There's going to be lots of different angles and possibilities to play with. So let me know what cards you think I missed or if there's some cards that you wouldn't have added in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like or subscribe. It really helps the channel. And until next time, take care. Woo!